so this is 1.3 first one and okay so why why is it trivial uh when i do, uh, reduce this uh, matrix uh, i'm getting identity matrix okay right that's the correct way at this point that's the correct way right so you apply the whatever row transformations you have and then you get identity yeah, that is correct and that means that this solution is going to be trivial right okay and you're saying that for the second one is also the same but let us just uh, run through the row reduction together and see it's always very useful to practice this because it's not just for computational speed but you will you will see that later it's very useful to uh, just Uh, so let us call this A. So let us see that the first one that we do. Uh, yeah. Interchange the rows. Oh, you want to interchange the rows? Yeah, that, that can be done, right? So you can interchange the rows. Um, Then you multiply this with three and you uh, subtract. So again, this kind of operation does not change the determinant. Okay? If you are keeping track of the determinant and so on, you can think that it doesn't change the determinant. Right. And then again, Correct. Now you can, yeah. So you see Maybe this, right. So you see this is your pivot, right? This, I don't know if they have called that in the book so far, but this is a pivot. Okay. This is a pivot. And this means that X1, because this variable, this column belongs to X1, right? For first variable, this column is associated to the first variable. And this column then becomes a pivot column. All this terminology can be used for later. So, uh, sir, uh, yeah, sir, hello, sir. Uh, there is a minus C over there uh, in A matrix. Uh, at uh, like uh, one three zero uh, on third row. Oh, okay, okay. So that is minus three. That's not three. Right. Okay. Right. So then you can change it. Minus six, so six plus one, seven. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Right. So you can see. And the min change minus ten to eight. Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. Now you will move. So basically, now uh, it's also that once you get a pivot. Right. Once you get this pivot variable, then you then to find a new pivot variable, you have to find it from a different row. Right. The same row, you don't get another pivot variable. And it's just it's just our common sense, right, that we want to simply sort of. Uh, yeah, you can understand that one can say things. But... So now this one also so you can. Yeah, you have to just do the calculations. So yeah, you do the calculations <laughs> and then you get one, as you have said, you get this. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. The point, the point is that, uh, the point is that suppose, suppose you, suppose here you had got a zero, right? Then you would have to interchange these two rows. Okay. A second and third row. If here also you would have got a zero, then it would have been a problem. 
right because then uh, you can understand that then the second column say you do not get any pivot variable okay? then you have to move to the third column and uh, do your thing so yeah all those things are there then the equation will become something like this final thing will become something like this right and then uh, these two variables will be your pivot variables all it means is that their values are determined from the other variables. In this case, the second variable will be the remaining free variable. Okay. So, yeah. And this terminology you will get familiar with gradually. Okay. So, yeah. So, now, yeah. Find all solutions to this and all solutions to this. Okay. So, Okay, so this would be problem number three, right? So section three, but problem number three. So how do you do this? All solutions. Sir, to... uh, okay, I changed the uh, it uh, to row equivalent form A matrix, and uh, mm -hmm. then compared with uh, uh, it, it became identity matrix, okay. and uh, then. Okay, uh, then I multiplied a into x is equal to a x1, x2, x3, and 2x means 2x1, 2x2, 2x3. Right. Then, I, um, then x1 is equal to 2x2, x2 is equal to 2x2. Okay, okay, one second. So, do you go from, do you go from here to here? Something like this. Yes, one, X two. And how yes. does the right hand side change? It's two X one, two X two. No, it will not be two X one, two X two, right? Okay, okay. So I Where have it... to apply same operation here also. What do you think? You have to apply, right? When you when you do that base simple simultaneous equations, you have to do the same thing to the other side also. Otherwise, how will the thing remain same? Isn't it? Right. So whatever you're doing to the, yeah, this is just a column, but whatever you're doing this side, you have to do it this side also. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense, right? If you have two equations, you have to, you're saying I'm multiplying two times the first equation and adding to the second equation. So you have to do that to both the sides of both the equation, right? Of the equation, right? Otherwise it is mathematically wrong, right? That just, just from basic high school, pre like seven, eight also, whatever you did, right? It is just that, right? It's nothing, nothing different, is it, right? Like if you have this and then you have some this, right? Then if, if, if I, if I subtract this, or whatever, right? I subtract this, then this becomes 2x plus 3y equal to 1. This becomes 0y1. This also you have to subtract. Otherwise, how will it remain same? All that is fine, right? So basically, that is what you did, right? But uh, you see, I think uh, that method is not uh, is not good. Okay. What they intend to do, what they intend to ask you to do is something like this. You can think about this. This, right? And so this X is a column vector. Okay, I usually don't write like this, but yeah, maybe I should start writing properly in this case. In this uh, is... A minus, A minus 2i. Right, A correct, exactly, right? That is what it, that's the, that's the way to do it, right? That is a correct way to do it because uh, otherwise it is not correct. It means otherwise, otherwise you'll be solving a very strange thing in the end, right? You'll have a, uh, and then you will uh, reduce it to homogeneous maybe, but you should immediately reduce it to homogeneous because this is like that. Both sides are variable, right? So you can bring it and then you can reduce it to homogeneous. And then you can try it, okay? Let's, let's not discuss that now, we can try it. Right. So yeah, so I mean, look, you have to try these questions, right? Before we do it, you have to try this on your own. And yeah, what else can I say? So these are the 
Yeah, I will say that you try them, right? For so, do you have any doubts from the theory? Do you want me to say anything? So far, from what you have read, sir. Uh, I mean, I didn't try to uh, understand the proofs of all these theorems, like theorem two, theorem three. I just read the statement, and, uh, and it is. I mean, okay for I. <laughs> okay, so let us try to understand what is the proof of theorem two, right? We should understand the proofs. I mean, most of it uh, material is hidden in the proof, right? So. So to each elementary row operation, there corresp either corresponds an elementary row operation. Uh, right. So basically, there is an inverse elementary row operation, right? So every row operation there is. So what is uh, right? What is a row operation, right? So what is a row operation? row operation so you see what is happening i will try to say it in a slightly general way okay and you should ask me if there is anything else. yeah so let us see if we fix the collection of all so i'll say at this level okay i will say like this if fix the collection of all m by n matrices over a field n is this notation okay okay sir this is the collection of all matrices, okay? All matrices, M by N matrices over a field. You will see that it's very beneficial to talk like this. Because already in the book, one language is written. I will suggest that you have to read the proofs, okay? It may take a bit of, so it may take a bit of time, but you have to patiently read it. And uh, then gradually you will get the feel for them, right? So that's not a problem. But I'm trying to say this in a, in a slightly general setting. So this. So, so, what we are going to do, what so what a row operation is, is basically a function, right? It's a function. We are going to interpret it as a function from the collection of all matrices of some size to collection of all matrices with the same dimension, right? With the same M, M and N. Okay. And why am I saying like this? Because see, what does a row operation do? A row operation, there are three row operations which you have studied. And a row operation takes a matrix and gives you a matrix again, right? It takes a matrix, it does something to the matrix, does something to the rows, and it gives you another matrix. So is it not a function? Yeah. It is a function, right? What is a function after all? Something that takes in something and gives you something, right? This function is, yeah. uh, there are three functions, right? Three row operations are three functions, right? And every function yeah. is taking a matrix and giving you a matrix, okay? So let me see the numbering. So here we have, let us say uh, the first row operation, okay? First row operation, uh, let's call it, what should we call it? They have not given it any name. So we will, yeah, we will call it O1, okay? Operation one, right? So, I mean, in fact, uh, this is also like a family of functions because you see, it depends on which row you are multiplying and also by which scalar you are multiplying. So it's all those things will give you different functions, right? So it's not three functions actually. So O1, O1 means the rule number one. So that's the one. And the other, I will have to say which row, which row is it acting on? So let us say it's acting on uh, row number K, right? And which number is it multiplying by? Let us say it is multiplying by some number lambda, right? Where is lambda living? Lambda has to cannot be zero, right? You have seen that, right? Lambda cannot okay. be zero. Otherwise, you can see it doesn't make sense. If you multiply an equation by zero, it's not very good. So lambda is in F star. F star means that all those things means apart from zero. This is basically stands for F minus zero. Okay? This note, this language might be a bit uncomfortable for you now, but just uh, yeah, if you just push yourself to understand. Yeah. Right? It's fine, sir. I mean, we okay. use it in public. Right. Then there's no problem. Perfect. Then it's good. So basically, this becomes a function. Okay. So this is the function that I'm talking about. Okay. Right. Now, what your theorem 2 is telling, right, 
what theorem 2 is telling is that if you compose this function first of all it is saying that for this function there is a inverse right that is what the theorem okay. is telling right that given a matrix a and you apply a row operation then there is another row operation e they are calling it e there is another row operation e such that if you apply e then you actually get back a and if you do it the other way also you will you will get a right both the ways the composition is get so it's an inverse right so now tell me what is the inverse of this that way it will be proved right so if i am doing this particular row operation then what is the inverse well the inverse will just be again you use the first operation only you use it on the same row but you multiply by lambda inverse correct yes sir there's nothing else right so ye ho gaya this is inverse both ways composition is identity you can now write but you should write the proof if you don't write the proof then so you should write you should write patiently okay this is my matrix this is the a right and when i apply this function you have to write in the beginning you have to write we also write when we learn any new topic then we have to write to get a feel for it okay so this will become okay k th row will become a k a k 1 will become lambda a k 2 multiplied by lambda other rows will remain same right then you have to apply this operation and you show you get back a okay and then you do the other way also and you show you get back so that is basically what this proposition is saying now you have to just uh, for homework you have to show what are the inverses for the other operation so this operation is fine right but what are the other operations yes. there are other operation right which is let's say operation number 2 and this is taking rth row um replacing the rth row so it involves two things right taking rth row taking sth row and taking a constant c taking s times the rth row and putting it to uh, sorry s times uh, sorry c times the sth row and adding it to the rth row okay yes, so this one so what will be the inverse of this one it will be Okay. Right. That way you will obviously get back, right? There is nothing, right? So yeah. Okay. So then, when if you have number two, number three, then you did, uh, you replace this by two plus three c. Then, if you want to get it back, then you have to replace it by minus three c. That's all. Right? Or maybe three of minus. C. Then you get back to two by two three. it is just that so in this is basically what they are saying right so this is you should read the proof if you don't read the proof then it is not done okay okay sir ah uh, yeah and then uh, theorem 3 is row equivalent the homogeneous systems of uh, exactly the same so you should read these things you should read these things okay? so yeah it's okay but it's uh, what you are doing is you are first solving a few simple you can do that actually solve a few simple problems you can actually do this solve the first uh, five problems okay and then read the proofs okay try to understand the proofs and then read then try to solve 678 okay 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 see it's a slow process i understand it's a bit it can be a bit boring can be a bit boring is because this book is a bit heavy it's a terse book right opman and kunz is a very standard just a standard book and yeah so it's written for yeah but if you work through it after some time you will see you will also become it will become very very simple by the time you reach third fourth chapter things will you will see how much progress you have made in the thinking of this so yeah so don't worry about it work through it slowly patiently and you will see progress will be made so yeah. later on later on um, you will see that uh, maybe you already know that this this thing which we are describing combinatorially this can actually be said as a going to 
multiplying by a certain matrix like a and after this operation you get a new matrix right that new matrix can be written in terms of a times b a okay in general for any x so this this function which takes a matrix and applies this row operation can be said as taking a matrix and multiplying it by a fixed matrix for every row operation there is a matrix multiplication which gives that row operation which has the same effect as that row operation okay uh, which has the same effect right which has the same effect as that of the row operation not effect okay <laughs> yeah okay it has the same effect so it is that you will see and it will be it's very very nice and because you will see it just it just goes in very beautiful things Anyway, so yeah, let's uh, stop here and uh, then yeah, we can meet tomorrow most like, and if I cancel, then I will tell you. So the problem that is happening is that I also have my end sense coming up. Okay. But never mind. I will let okay. you know if I, if I need to cancel, I will let you know till then the default time is tomorrow. And so we will meet tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow is 9.30, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. But if I cancel, I'll let you know, but you keep working. Okay. Yeah. All yes, right. Sir. Then uh, see you. Bye.